Well, the moon's still up. Light's still on. Pretty good ground fog out there. They're finally, <laughs> critters are finally coming through the fog. And the yeah, sun's working its way. Yeah, when I first looked over there right before I walked up here to do this, I uh, really couldn't see many of those. And there's a bunch down here in the feed barn. O two threes one up. Might get her in the door right there, Bellerin. Anyway, here in a couple of days, be a bunch of loud calves. But you know, for right now, it's just a few cows and calves that just aren't real happy because calf can't eat. And, yeah, mama don't want to eat anymore anyway. And most of them. Pretty easy to tell the cows that milk good when you put the cat sucks in. She's 12 years old. Actually, you want to get technical, she's over 12 and a half. And her udder's full. Her teeth are getting a little big. That comes with age. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that since I'm standing right here. She's complaining. That's 023. Almost everybody else is out. There's a couple left in the barn. They need to all be out. And I can't see her udder from here. She's another older cow, I think. I can't tell. Here, start the roof. Yeah, she's kind of full too. I mean, granted, some of them have already been drying up some. Obviously not those two. But anyway, figuring out what to do, trying to find a couple leaks on the international tractor. It needs to come down and get degreased and pressure washed. I thought when we got done cutting hay that the engine compartment got cleaned up, but it did not. So, move the skid steer. It doesn't stink at the moment, but then I haven't sat on it and fired it up yet. <laughs> Still want to try to get the carcass out of there if we can. So, super clean on here. She just hosed it, which is the hose. She's going to pressure wash it too. And she had to pull the battery box cover off. You ever seen a fat go wrong? That'd be me. She was a shitting and a getting. Bees, bees, and threw the lid down, and there was like two or three down here. There's more than that. There's one. a live one there yet. He ain't no more. And looking for a nest. There's no nest. Pull the rubber off that goes over the batteries, and this whole thing was completely covered. They were three or four and deep. And all the way around the back, too. And all the way around the back. There's still a few crawling, but eh, they've met their maker. They just don't know it yet. Um, what you see here isn't even a third of what was in here. And I mean, it's, they're, they're piled up down that's in here. That's that one that's still trying to fly over here. Oh, she's getting another one trying to fly over here. Oh, and hey, Rodney, we had some soapy water because I gave, we used Dawn and water mixed in a little hand pump sprayer for degreasing some stuff. Which I was spraying. I hosed them down with that. All I did was slow them down. So they got raided. Anyway, that's her excitement so far. I don't know if there's any hiding back here or not. Can't see him anyway. Hoses are in the way. Oh, one on the alternator, too. Yeah, he crawled up from down here. There's, there's still, you know, oh, he just fell down. Didn't make it to the ground, though. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, he did. He's way, way over there now. <laughs> He's right here. Oh, one there, too? He ain't moving no more. Anyway, there's our fun for the moment. Oh, this thing, I noticed uh, where I disc last, there was oil dribbles across the guy's driveway from both times I crossed it. Then I saw oil dribbles at the top of our driveway coming in. Really can't find where it's leaking. Not enough to make dribbles anyway. But it needed to get cleaned up. She hasn't hosed this side yet. 
it uh, it was pretty dirty in there. That's a bad thing with the setup on this with the pusher fan and completely blocked off from the engine compartment. It gets no airflow, so everything just sits there. And you got to clean them up. A little bit breezy out here. There's about 20 or 30 killed here. I don't know if you can see them or not because yeah, I can't see the freaking screen. That's the last that we irrigated. I ain't doing much. This was the third to the last that we irrigated. Got the reactors and gophers, and yeah, none of them are working in this piece. I mean, they have been, but not right now. I did get one. I'll throw over there where those far cows are in that piece. Two others were working, but eh. I only wait so long in a hole, and 20 minutes is long enough. About half of them are still up in the feed barn. Brooke was here today, so Ty did some work on that tractor, and Brooke helped me get feeding done. And so they've been up there getting some dry feed. Helps on those cows that aren't nursing calves at the moment. They won't blow up as quick, right? Anyway, I just thought I'd get you a glimpse of this up here, because I've been up here and shown you much for a little bit. And the wind's just having fun down in the north at the moment. It's been from every direction since I've been out here. And it looks like the neighbors are up the other side of those trees. They haven't come back on this field yet, but they, I think when they come back out here, they started up the road up there and they're working their way back. They may be planting right behind, I don't know. Still kind of early for that yet, but depending on what they're planting. Um, I had somebody on TikTok ask for a demonstration of our bander, so Tyler and I did that. It's just shy of a three minute video. I'm going to throw that on here at the end just because. I mean, it shows good enough. And. I guess that's about all I got for the day. A little more stuff to go do, but I figured I'd come out here and check on everybody. A couple calves still laying over there in the shade, but their heads are up, they're fine, they ain't laid out. You watch them walk and you can tell which ones had the smaller nuts, we'll say. Usually it's ones with the smaller nuts that feel it more. Sometimes one of the big ones, though, they have a hard time walking for a day or two. But they'll all be fine. So, hope you all had a good Monday. Hope everybody has a good Tuesday. Thanks for watching, everybody. And if you haven't seen how the Caltrate Bander works, it'll be up here next. Okay, it was requested, so was requested. here we go. And she's so, trying to remember how to do it. I, it's been a couple years, so we yeah. normally put the splice down. That's when uh after you suck it up and it gets crimped it'll push that up so you're grabbing each one tight if you go the other way i think it'd probably open up so that goes down when you load it, it goes to here and then I always go through the bottom. she's not going quite far enough with stuff get that into there and then it holds it better then, right. then it goes through like that a couple years then she okay. screwed up again. We'll just, we'll just keep watching her screw up. Good thing I went for a three minute video on here. And then, there. And you'll make fun of me for this one too. You see will. If, see if I can hold the balls for her. Yeah, the balls. Oh, normally I grab it with the other hand to make sure they're both yes, down. Yes, you want to make sure they're, they're both, both down. Up. Then grab it. Slip up. You hold on to them and then you wrap it. And then by the time you get it good and tight, then you it, crimp it. It pulls pulls all the slack out and tightens it up. We're not going to waste no, one. No, we're not going to waste one. But. You ratchet until the indicator is to the back of the slot. And when it hits the back of the slot, she's going to get that out of there because I don't want to ruin one. Now I did it. Yeah, now she did it. Now I, I knew did she it. was going to do it. Now I did it. 
Yeah, good thing we made a three-minute video. We're already over halfway through it. After you get it, you hold the top and, and you push crimps. that down. So this part comes up and it crimps the middle. And you you got to really shove that sucker all the way down to make sure you're there. And then, oh, she didn't grab the knife. Grab but the knife. It's like an ear tag cutter, basically. The rubber will be stretched out from here to here. Oh, yeah, it, I did. Oh, yes, yeah, she did. It'll roll on both sides of this equally as and it pulls in. Go, and you and take the it. knife, and I always stay up here close. Yeah. So you leave it. I mean, if you went down here, you might pull out, but up here it can't. So essentially, you're going to have these two pieces yeah. you end, rolled up. What, what you end up with is literally the size of my fingers like that in a Y. And that is the caltrate. Is that what they call it, right? Yep, the caltrate bander. They're not cheap. But, you know, nothing is anymore, and it's been a really good tool. We've used it for, I don't know, at least 10 years. Probably more like 15. So, there you go. That's how it's done.